2 Timothy chapter number 4, and you'll just have to forgive me with my voice tonight, just a little bit hoarse, and so just forgive us with that. 2 Timothy chapter number 4. <coughs> Paul's writing here to us, and I'm a little lengthy here reading, but I don't want to leave anything out. 2 Timothy 4 and 1, Paul writing to Timothy. And he said, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and, at, and the time of my departure is at hand. For I have fought a good fight, and I have finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day and not unto me only but unto all of them also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica and Serene to Galatia Titus unto Dalmatia. He said only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Would you pray with me tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for this privilege to come into your wonderful house tonight. God, be assembled with your wonderful people. We pray, God, as we break the bread of life tonight, God, that you would anoint these lips of clay. God, one more time to preach this holy word from heaven this evening. I pray, God, direct our thought tonight and every word. God, may you just direct and anoint us, God, with the Holy Ghost. We can't do anything of ourselves, And, Father, I know that tonight and I'm dependent upon you and I thank you Lord for the many times Lord through this course of life God you've been there and anointed us and I pray Lord once again do that tonight asking all of these things in Jesus name amen and amen you may be seated one of the one of the greats not the only great but one of the greatest men in the entirety is of the word of god is this man that we just read to you from here tonight and that's the Apostle Paul. Wrote most of the New Testament, or many books, I should say, of the New Testament that you and I have tonight to study from and to read from and to glean and to grow in Christ in. We can give that account to the man, the Apostle Paul. Saints of God, as I begin to read here, Paul is fixing to, his life is fixing to be over, and he knows that. He said, I've run the race, and I've kept the faith. Now, I begin to look at that. That, but Paul is giving a warning here to a young preacher. Paul's given Timothy the direction in how that he's to go. Paul tells Timothy there's some days ahead, some things that's already going on, Timothy, that you're going to face. But he said, I've run the race and I've kept the faith. So what's he saying, Timothy? This thing can be done. Amen. The Apostle Paul, I thought about what a difference in a man when we're reading here in 2 Timothy 4. For what a difference in Paul that there is from the Paul that were the Saul of Tarsus that we read about just a few chapters back. What a difference there's been made in his life. For you see, there was a time when Paul couldn't have said what he just said because there was a time that he was pleasing the flesh and the things of this world and going again, the things of God, and thinking out of ignorance. He says this himself, out of it, doing things ignorantly, thinking he was doing God a certain but there had been a transformation in Paul's life. It was a Damascus Road experience. And child of God, many of us along the way may have not have been on the Damascus Road, but the same type of experience happened in our lives. It's called a born-again experience.
experience in Christ Jesus. It makes different people out of us, does it not? I think back when Paul had been transformed now, has been preaching the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ, turning this world literally upside down with this gospel message of Christ. Many lives has been changed, not only under the preaching, under the ear that they gave to the apostle Paul, but think about it for a moment of time. How many people has sat down through the hardships in life and they've picked up the word of God and they've opened up a letter that old Paul had wrote down. They've opened the book, Brother Allen, and they found a word that a man of God placed there being inspired by the Holy Ghost but writing down with pen the things that God had done for him. How many lives over that 2,000 mark year mark has been changed by the writings of the Apostle Paul? Paul said, I've done one thing. He said, I've kept the faith. Amen. He said, there's laid up for me now a crown of righteousness. And saints have got to begin to think about that. And we do. Sometimes the older that we get, we begin to look sometimes uh, not at the things of this world. And he's telling Timothy here, he said, Timothy, he said, he said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I kept the faith. And saint of God, he said, for henceforth there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And he said, not to me only. Now, saint of God, that's a rejoicing point right there for us. He said, but unto all of them also that love is appearing. You see, Demas, he went right on down, verse 10 there of the chapter. He went right on down and he said, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Now, saint of God, there was a time when Demas was imprisoned with Paul and went on and walked with Paul through this. What you got to realize about the apostle Paul's life and many of the letters that you and I read through the word of God, many Many of them, Paul penned being put in a prison cell somewhere. Penned them down many times being chained to a guard there. And Demas had forsaken Paul and he said, having loved this present world, Demas has gone backward rather than forward. Now, saint of God, there was a time when I'm sure Demas would have given his life. <coughs> for Paul and to be have a part of that but the glamour of the world began to shine brighter than the darkness in the prison cell. Saint of God Demas began to look to the things of this present world no doubt as he sat there in that prison cell along with them and hearing all the taunt of the enemy that his eyes become fixed upon the things of this world. Saint of God it's very easy for people to let that happen in their life. We've seen it all along along the way. They've been people that I've been in church with through years of time and coming up in this thing, going to church, that I've been in many a good service with them tonight. They're not even serving God. They're away from God, far from Him. I've seen them stand and sing. I've seen them stand and preach. I've seen them stand and testify. I've seen them walk with God, but tonight they're away from that. They too, like Demas, have loved the things of this present world. They are allowed the enemy of our soul to just come in and sell them a bill of goods and to tell them a lie and they believed that lie and they followed on with it. Isn't it sad when we see those things happen? I no doubt uh, Paul could have been a lot harsher with his words but you can see the love in the man of God's heart as he talked about Demas. Demas went back out to the things of this world. How many people, saint of God, could we name tonight that it's done the same thing. Church, with all diligence, keep a guard over your heart. Watch with diligence you walk with Christ in this hour that we're living in. When things is going good, watch all, saint of God, because there's an enemy, an adversary that goes about us. Paul says in verse 9, he said, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. Listen, saint of God, he said, only Luke in verse number 10, he said, for Demas has forsaken me. 
having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica and unto and to caress and there's some words here that I can't pronounce and he said only Luke's with me he said take Mark and bring him with thee for he's profitable to me for the ministry Paul realized and saint of God that these folks that had been with him in a time past was no longer there they've gone after the flesh they've gone after the things of this world that pleased the flesh rather than to follow after the things of God. You see, the things that they went after were mere temporal things. Oh, church, it's easy sometimes for us to lose our focus and to lose that reality of where we're at. We get focused on maybe things out there. They're not anything with going on and doing things when they're, when they're right. I'm not talking about going out and doing bad things, but when we're doing things we can do right things and miss God and that you do realize that when the problem rolls in it's not about having things but when things has you when your life's consumed with that then my friend you if you're not very careful you're on the verge of missing God when you're consumed more with the cares of life when then you are with God you have missed God that's just plain and simple and church Demas had got to that point he had walked away from the ministry and from Paul and all the things and Paul says just gather up Luke and bring Mark Luke's the only one with me bring Mark and come on down here I'm getting ready to leave this walk of life and I'm getting ready to go but Paul said there's some things that's laid up for me amen he said there's a crown of righteousness that's laid up for us church I believe that we but the thing that drove Paul and continued to build that drive within him is Paul realized this he realized realize that I'm a pilgrim and I'm a stranger in a foreign land. Amen. I want you to know something child of God tonight. You and I that are born again believers. We're in this world but we're not of this world. We're a stranger to this world. This world has its idols has all of its ideology all of its things but child of God for the born again believer we're strangers down here. We're pilgrims and sojourners that's headed for us city whose builder and maker is God. We live in a society that talks about their great buildings, their big towers, their mighty empires that they have. But oh friend, it is not one not one little tidbit has ever measured up to what awaits you and I when we step from this life to the next. Can you say amen? When we realize what awaits the child of God when he gets home. But you got to realize something same of God. We ain't home just yet. Amen. There's some that's passing by this way every day and they're going to that place that Jesus said, I go away to prepare for you. I can tell you something, brother, sister, when we focus on that and on that alone, we too, like the apostle Paul, can say to the things of this world so long. Amen. What's Paul saying? Paul's saying my life is hid and fixed in Christ Jesus. I'm looking for the things to come, not the things that's present. Amen. Paul's saying one of these days when I get there, there's a crown of righteousness that's been laid up and it's been laid up for me. Amen. Paul knew that when I get there one day, I'll have run the race. I've finished the course. And he said, and I have kept the faith. Amen. I can tell you something, brother, sister, that's something to shout about right there. It's something to lift your hands hands and to praise God and to say that I have kept the faith and I've walked with God all of this time and one day I'm going to inhabit what is mine. Amen. How is it mine, preacher? Because Jesus said in his word in John's gospel, he said, I'm going away to prepare it for you. Amen. And who's those yous? It's those that served him. It's those that's committed their life to him. It's those that's walked with him and loved him and has kept the faith. Amen. That's kept the faith in the things of God and one day is going to receive the reward that's been put there for them. Saint of God, the Bible said that moth can't get in, thief can't steal to break through, rust can't take a hold 
of it. Why? Because it's of God. That's why. Amen. When we get to the place to know that God's got more for a saint of God than what's down here, it builds a drive on the inside of us to serve him more and more and more and to want more of him and to have more of him. And the more of him that we get, the more of him that we want. Amen. And the more that we get, then the more that we want again. Amen. Oh, church, when we get to that place that we desire him with all of our heart, then we realize what awaits you and I. I can tell you something, saint of God, tonight. I'm glad for the hope that I have of one day going to have a place called heaven. I'm glad of that. I'm glad for what my Jesus done for me and he done for you on the cross of Calvary. I'm glad for that salvation. I'm glad for the hope of heaven. I'm glad tonight to be filled with the baptism in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. I'm glad for that tonight. Oh church, but I can tell you this tonight. I've, I've only seen in part down here. I, I've only got a glimpse of what it's going to be like one of these days we're going to know in full. Right now we just kind of know in part, but one day we're going to know in full. I'm glad for all of the things that he's done for you and I. I'm glad for the hope that we have in him. But I can tell you something tonight, church. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. I'm glad that I'm saved. I want to rejoice in that right there. I'm glad that I'm born again. I'm glad I'm not the man that I used to be. Amen. I'm glad that I'm not. I get reminded of that a lot. Now I can tell you something, saying, God, I've got a reputation out there to contend with. But I'm glad tonight to be a born again believer. I'm glad that that old man's been brought under subjection and there's a new man that lives on the inside there. I'm thankful tonight, Brother Allen, that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for the change that came there. I'm thankful for that, for the one that lives inside of us, the desire that drives us. Yes, sir, there's some times like you when I get up in the morning, I don't even know if I want to get out of bed, but I realize the hope that that I have. God's given me another day of life. God's given me one more day down here for a little while to go on. I don't know what the day may hold. I've not finished this one yet, but I don't know what the day may hold, but one thing that I do know, I know who holds the days that I do have. Amen? And it's Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Aren't you glad tonight to know him? Aren't you glad tonight that when you lay your head down on your pillow tonight and close your eyes that if, if, if the Lord comes back between now and morning tomorrow evening we're sometime along the way anyway I should say we'll be at the marriage supper of the Lamb aren't you glad to know Saint of God that if I breathe my last breath sometime between now and morning and this time next week I've only a memory Jasper first assembly of God somewhere during the week they'll hold a funeral service aren't you glad to know that your name's been written down in the Lamb's book of life and the blood of Jesus Christ has cleansed you from all sin. I can tell you tonight, friend, if you can't say that with honesty, this altar's open even right now. Amen. I can tell you something, brother, sister, it ought to be a drive on the inside of us to serve him with all of our heart for what he's done for you and I. Amen. One of these days, this thing that we call life's going to come to an end. And we are a pilgrim and we are a stranger here. But one day we're going to the place that he's prepared for us. Hallelujah. Man, I've seen things in this life down here. I've been, I've been in some of the, uh, I, would, I can say, some of the most extravagant homes that this part of the world houses. I've been inside of many of them. I've seen things there that would literally, would, would, would astound for the most of us. At least it does my little old mind. But I can tell you something, child of God, it's not a drop in the bucket to that mansion that awaits you and I. Not a drop in the bucket, not the Trump Towers, not all these things. It's not a drop in the bucket to what awaits you and I in glory. And one day, child of God, one day we're going to go there. It may be tonight, it may be tomorrow, one day next week. God only knows that. But one day when it's prepared, we're going to leave here. And when we get there, we're going to have that place that he's got for us. And child of God don't know about you, 
but I'm looking more forward to it every day. Amen. I look out there when Paul said, Demas has left us. He said, and he's loved this present world. He said, he's forsaken us. He said, he's forsaken me, having loved this present world, and he's departed. Church, what a sad statement to be made about an individual. What a sad statement. But listen to what Paul tells Timothy here. Just in, We're coming to a close here very shortly. Our voice is wearing out before we start coughing. But I just want you to listen to what he says here in verse 1. He said, he's saying this to Timothy. He said, I charge thee therefore before God and, and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now listen to what he says to Timothy. He said, preach the word. Preach the word. Now you see what he just says to Timothy? He gives Timothy here the distinct direction. There is no gray area about what Paul just told Timothy. He said, preach the word. That's just plain and simple. It doesn't take a Bible scholar to figure out what Paul's saying to him. He said, you need to stay within the word of God. Preach the word, the gospel. Preach this word, Timothy. And he gives Timothy the reasoning for that. He said, be instant in season, out of season. He said, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and what? Doctrine. He gives him what he needs. He tells him how you're to do these things with all long suffering and doctrine. Now notice what he says in verse number three. He said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Now, church, can we honestly say tonight and looking in a society, can we honestly not say that this scripture is very much being fulfilled in the hour in which you're living in right now? Paul said, Timothy, he said, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. What's he saying? He said, they're going to be going after something for their own gain. This gospel is going to become to them something that will bring a gain to them. And that's what it's about. But Paul said, Timothy, preach what? Preach the word. Stay within the word of God. Son, don't let these things move you. Don't get caught up in it. He said, for there's a time coming when they will not endure sound doctrine. And saying of God, we're living in an hour just like that right Right there. We're living in an age right now, my friend. I said I was done, shouldn't have said that, and I apologize for it. We're living in an age right now that man has said this Bible doesn't really mean what it says. And saint of God in doing so, they've wrote it around to fit their lustful desires. They've wrote it around to fit their, their desires that totally depicts and goes against what the true word of God says. And church in doing and so it's, it is exactly what Paul is telling Timothy. He said they are not enduring. There'll be a time coming, son, when they will not endure this doctrine that you're preaching to them. There's a time coming when they're not going to take the true word of God and stand on it. But he said, Timothy went right on down to say, he said, Timothy, he said, I've run the race and I've kept the faith. Amen. What's Paul getting ready to do, saying of God? God, just a few verses from here. Paul's getting ready to die because he's preached this gospel. He's getting ready to give his life for the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And he's telling this young preacher, boy, there's coming a time when men's not going to endure this, even where he's at right now. Now you think with me for a moment of time. How many people, they want to hear the last words. They want to hear the last things that family's got to say. Paul's and bound and getting ready to die. And he said, I fought a good fight. <laughs> he said, I fought a good fight. And he said, I finished my course. 
and I've kept the faith. Church, what a testimony. What a testimony. He goes right on down here in verse number four, and he said, they'll turn away their ears. Now, you notice this. He said, they'll turn away their ears from the truth, and they'll be turned into fables. He said, but watch thou in all things, their afflictions. He said, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I'm now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Amen. Don't you know that young Timothy... <laughs> There was a many a time when the going got rough and the conflict got hard and people began to really come down on this young preacher. Don't you know that young Timothy refreshed himself in the words that this great apostle gave him? Don't you know that he remembered what he said, some of his very last words that he said? I can tell you, saint of God, we remember the last words that we said to our family members and our mind. They stay fresh. We can remember that Timothy's got a, got a man that he's looked up to, Paul. Paul saying, son, be instant in season. Do a good work. What's he doing? What's, what's Paul doing for Timothy? He's encouraging him. He's encouraging him to, to continue on in this thing. Don't let it go. Don't let it go. Church, if I could encourage in one thing, continue on in the doctrine of Christ. Continue on to, to seek after the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Continue on. Be strengthened in the things of God and allow God to have a part in your life. Paul said, Timothy, he said, I have kept the faith and I've run the race. And he said, my departure's at hand. <laughs> My, what a testimony. I can tell you something, church. I pray to God that one of these days when we're going, we are going to leave this walk of life by the way of the grave or by the way of the air, I don't know. But I hope that just a little bit could be said about me like Paul said here about himself. He said, I've finished my course <laughs> and I've kept the faith. <laughs> he said, there's some things waiting on old Paul over there. There's some things waiting on old Paul over there. <laughs> I can tell you there was a crown of righteousness waiting on him, but I believe Paul had a meeting more important to him than the crown. <laughs> And it's the one that he needed to talk to that he'd met on the Damascus road that came to him. Paul said, I was a man that saw Christ, but I was a man that's born out of due season. But they come in one day, Paul saying, just very shortly, I'm going to stand before the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Son of the living God. I'm going to stand before Jesus. More than a crown of righteousness that Paul was waiting on. More than streets of gold and gates of pearl, walls of jasper and the things that the Bible teaches us that one day we'll be able to enjoy. All of those things Paul said that there, he said there's a crown laid up for me, but I believe Paul longed to see the one that he'd saw on that Damascus road. Why, why, Brother Steve, would Paul want to see the one that he'd already saw? Because Paul knew and could see in his life what that one had done for him. I just ask you tonight to look at your own life and to look at your own self. And just look what Jesus has done for you. You may be sitting in this house tonight away from God, not born again, not ready to meet heaven. I want to ask you something tonight. What are you waiting on? What are you waiting on tonight? You know, there have been a passage of Scripture that's been going on in my mind all week long, and about everybody in here, I guess, knows. My sister passed away a week ago Friday. And I had a great opportunity, and I think I shared this last Sunday morning, but I just feel like sharing it again tonight. I had a great opportunity to go into her hospital room there on Wednesday uh, morning, I believe it was. 
and walk in there and sit down with or stand there by my sister's bed. And I'd been talking to her for two or three days about her, her relationship with Christ and getting right with God. My sis was a smart lady, very educated, very educated, and new books inside and out. And I talked to her, and she knew about the things of God. She had the same raising, the same upbringing that I'd had. Been in church, our mama took us to church all of our lives, pretty much. And I sat there and talked to her and began to, I went in there Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, and, and doctors was not giving, they wasn't telling us for sure what was going wrong, but everything was indicating something was very seriously wrong and, and not knowing for sure at that point what it was. I asked my sis, I said, sis, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? She said, buddy, I don't know. I don't know. I looked at her, Brother Allen, and I said, Sis, have you prayed? And I'm going to just say it in her words. She said, no, buddy. Not like I should have. You see, there's a difference in praying and praying through. There's a lot of people that talk to God, but they've not yet prayed through. And my sis knew enough to know, she knew enough about the things of God that I've not prayed like I should have. And I just looked at her and I said, what would you like to? She said, I sure would. I went over and took her by the hand. We began to pray with her and the glory of God filled that room such a wonderful experience I, I can't explain it I can't put words to it but just such a powerful experience as God just the Holy Ghost just flooded that room and as she began to worship and praise God we stood there and cried and wept and worshiped for a while and 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 and, and just began to talk about the goodness of God a little while others came in and things went brother Allen went that night and prayed with her and things begin to transpire and Friday morning real early we, we realized the worst of the situation was getting worse and they'd call my cousin had called and asked that we'd come in Melissa and I went up we had, uh, Thursday night I guess Wednesday or Thursday night one night spent the night there with them got up early the next morning it was Thursday night got up early the next morning walked into that hospital room I stood by my sister's bed and I listened to the doctor give her the, one of the grimmest reports that a person could get. I stood there and I listened to that and tears streaming down her face as that doctor telling her all of these things that befalled her. And after he went out and told her the seriousness of the matter and the seriousness of the procedures and the things that's going to come, I, said, I told her, I said, it does not change our God. He's still the same. All everybody was gone. I walked back in there and I pulled me up a chair and turned it around backward to the to the bed and I sat down there on it and I took her by the hand and I sat in there holding her hand. And ladies and gentlemen, before my eyes her countenance began to change. I'd never seen that before. Brother Allen can tell you he is there Wednesday night and she's a sick girl. She she looked rough and it just hadn't felt good in several days, but literally her countenance began to change. And I'm sitting there looking at her and she'd look at me and it's like she'd look past me and she'd talk to me and I thought this is and I thought surely this is not, but could this be? Complexion just in a ray, eyes as bright as stars. And she began to talk to me. And I realized something. I got up from there and I thought, well, maybe she's going to, she's showing signs she's getting better. Things is going to be different. I walked out of that room, never even looked back. My, some family was coming in. They could only be one or two in there at a time, and we didn't want to press our luck. So we walked out of that room, and I wasn't expecting anything different. But just in a few short hours, she'd be standing before her Creator. I can tell you something, church, it makes a difference in your life. Can I just ask you a question tonight? Why would you put that off? Why would you put off eternal things 
We're not talking about a trip to Walmart. We're not talking about something in this world, but we're talking about your soul. We're talking about eternity. Church, they've been a message on hell that a lot of people has took out of the pulpit and they don't even like it mentioned. But I can tell you something, it might be time that we get back to some of that. Because there is a place that a man needs to fear and it's a place called hell. His head's is bowed with me tonight and eyes is closed. Ladies, would you come back tonight? 